You know, I'm pretty excited. Uh, it's peak of the tide right now. Peak of the flood. Should get lighter to get out to this wreck. But these conditions look really good. Even better than that forecast. I don't know what all these seagulls are doing here. That tide is really high. It's like really high. Put these two pieces back in the car. Oh, that water feels cold. Definitely feels colder than the last time I was out. This one goes here. Water is so clear. I really don't think I've <clears throat> seen the water clearer than this. I'm plugging it in. Plugging it into right here. Got my little SAE port. Whoops. So that's it. You know, see I have two settings, but I actually always leave it on the low because battery just drains too quick. Like pedaling a tiny bit, I get like four, 4.25. So, you know, I'll just, I'll take over four miles an hour pedaling easily any day because if I bump it up I might get four and a half five but I'll lose more than half the power quicker so it's not worth it to me it'll be worth it to me when I get a higher amp hour battery which I do plan to do over the winter so I'm still trying for these blackfish it's uh getting to be late November it's about 48 degrees not too bad. Water temps are like 52, 53. Uh, but I really want to see if these blackfish are still around. See if they're uh, out here on this wreck. It's it's kind of a broken down wreck. So I'm really not going to be expecting too much out of it. But I do want to see what it looks like with the underwater. Yeah, this is definitely the, you know, the latest I've gone out to try and get these things. But it's a lot of fun there. A lot of it is just the challenge to me. You know, the fight is great. They taste great. But just like the hunt of finding them is, uh, is what I probably enjoy the most. Made it to the wreck. And I'm just letting myself drift to see how I'm going to drift. Pretty much like anticipated. The wind is going this way, the current's going this way. And I'm slowly going with the wind at like probably 0.3 miles an hour. And there's the wreck. Kind of see what we got going on. It's not big, it's not a lot. I'm gonna try a brick this time. Lost my grapple anchor on the last outing. So it's pretty deep. We're at like 58, 59 feet. So I got some green crabs 
and I got a little bit of blue crab, crab left over, but most are dead. So it's going to be mostly a green crab expedition today. I'm going to start out using a, uh, a rig because the last wreck that I fished, I just seemed to get more bites. I'm going to try a three ounce. See if I can hold. I may not. I think it is pretty quick out here. I tried this wreck in the uh, in the summer for sea bass. I didn't catch anything. I don't think it just. I just don't think it has very good height to it you know it doesn't have very good relief it's broken up definitely coming off of the structure a little bit which is good because you know I always think you just have a better chance of a big one comes off the structure because yeah big one it's very hard to, to get a big one off a wreck and they just take you in oh that's a good one Good fish. Wow. Dang, I think that's a keeper. It's gonna be close. Probably not. Nah. 16 and a half. That's cool. Kind of chin hooked her a little bit. She'll be alright though. Ooh. I just really hope I can stay. Stay put with the brick. <laughs> it's like my one fear right now. We got a hot bite going. We got a hot bite. Oh, dang. I think I had some muscle. My hands aren't cold yet. I have gloves in case they do get too much. Thanks again, Dan, for those gloves. They are really nice. I had them on earlier. Oh. Not that big. Some yellows. See that? Pretty cool. I think they really want less shell. The, I don't know. The brick is kind of keeping me though. Oh! It didn't hit the bottom. This bite is on. 
Oh, this guy's got some weight. Probably an almost keeper again. Oh. oh, nice smell. All right. fish more yellows love that so cool so cool when you get these green crabs and you're only getting one crab that is for sure more expensive than if you're getting the blue crabs which you are guaranteed to get four pieces out you know if you do a half on a blue crab I mean that's a serious serious bait offering so yeah just you know something to keep in mind I think if you can get green crabs for a good price, they're probably the best. I think I lost the bait. <laughs> I was not ready for that take. That little guy took it with some fury. This is fun though. This is a lot of fun getting a hot bite you know getting a hot bite in shallow water it's fun but catching them deeper i find it a little bit more fun oh man oh now they're just big teak Fish just fight so good. Like I wonder if the blackfish were here in the summer, but just weren't biting, you know, the gulp jig. Oh, I can't even hit the ground. These little guys. getting the bait to the bottom right now. Oh. It's not even a keeper. <laughs> oh my goodness. So awesome. Alright. Oh. 
<laughs> oh. Good one. Wow, nice females. Whew. She is big. Still not a keeper though. This is you know, this is what I came out for. I wanted a hot bite. Yeah, a keeper would be nice. But I'm okay. I didn't bring my cooler. I really wasn't planning on keeping one. Unless it's like towards the end or I or its bladder comes out or something. You know, I don't I don't have to keep a fish today. But to me getting you know decent sized fish in a new spot that's deep it's just like it's just the best that's what it is for me I will try to use the underwater oh man just don't want to shut down this bite and the current really does have to be a little bit less. Ooh, a sea bass. I'll keep you. If you're a keeper. You know, sea bass are a much more prolific species. And I think they taste better. He's only 13 and change, so he is not gonna come home. He will go back to his home. Yeah, keep that crab. You deserve it. get some underwater footage before I have to leave. I've only probably been here 30 minutes. Oh my goodness. This is just rapid, rapid fire bites right now. But they're small. You know, if I had to guess, this wreck has already been fished. Oh, that might be a keeper. Yeah, I think that's a keeper. Big female. Let's see. She's probably borderline. I don't know. Nah. She's so close. Nah, she's not. She 
not 16. out such an awesome fish love, love them Just under females. So although I don't have much underwater footage, I did learn a lot with some of this, so I wanted to share it. So here you're seeing some blackfish there at the bottom, but the light's on and yeah, they're a little skittish, they're not really coming close. This next part I have an additional rod with the rig set up there in the background. And you see that silt cloud that just came up when I moved it? I'm starting to think that that is the reason why the jig wasn't doing so great at these two wrecks. Is The bottom really is a lot of silt and mud. And I think they just kind of get stuck in the mud in a sense. And they're not easy to see. Whereas when you do this, you know, it creates kind of like a silt cloud, but the crab stays above the silt and it kind of flows there near the bottom. So I think this is uh, pretty good to, have, to do conventional rigs in, in this sort of environment. I think this is a porgy right there coming in. Pretty sure. And... Yeah, you don't see many fish here, but I really think it's because of the light. This next clip, I either forgot to turn the light on, or it just didn't go on. But I'm thankful that it happened that way, because even though it's a little bit dark, you're going to see a lot of blackfish. Yeah, you see there's a lot of commotion. Silk cloud looks to be attracting these fish. I really think these fish are very curious. I mean, look at this one coming in. I think he's actually nipping at maybe the light on the camera or something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of fish down there. Mostly female. But it's pretty cool to see this. And that's the crab there at the bottom right. But I think I had left the shell on. And they're not really finding much interest in it. Here you go with the light back on. And you can barely make out one of the fish right there on towards the right. I'm actually going to catch this fish, but yeah, he's pretty small.
Okay, now you're seeing the main part of the wreck. I re-anchored. This is when I re-anchored, got closer to the actual wreck, and wanted to explore a little more. And yeah, you can see there's some pretty decent structure on this on this wreck, though. Um, it's not a lot, but uh, you know it is significant enough to hold quite a few fish. Here you can kind of see what the top of the pieces of this wreck are. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but there's a good amount of coral. And it's nice because the coral does help illuminate the pieces. Yeah, this wreck actually is a lot bigger than I thought it was. But I think what happens is I got tricked into thinking Oh, 40 feet in length isn't really that much. See that though out there? I mean, it's pretty big and it probably goes the other direction too because I was kind of in the middle But yeah, it just looks different on your GPS and when you're down there and I'm really gonna have to get the light checked out But so as you can see now the light is sort of blinking It does have like a blink mode, but I don't think I turned it on anyways it's kind of going on and off and you're seeing it sort of illuminate the coral and go off and it kind of turns green and glows so I just uh, found that kind of interesting um, but the uh, water clarity definitely was really good I really didn't expect to get any kind of footage here at 55 almost 60 feet of depth without a light and yeah, it almost would have been better, maybe, if I didn't use the light. Oh well, uh, hopefully I can get out and try something like this again and be a little bit better prepared. Yeah, so I think I'm going to try to go back to regular fishing here. I found the wreck, like, with the camera. I think I was finally over top of it. I re-anchored to try to get a better view down there so I got snagged I know I was on part of it at least but the bike kind of shut off I haven't really been feeling anything with the underwater so I want to go back to regular fishing and see if I can kind of work this bite up again you know if you're not like constantly feeding these fish they kind of go back into hiding but here we go we're getting some bites now so it's definitely still around just hoping I can find like a you know bigger one. I do have one more spot I wanted to try, but I'll give this another like 30 minutes of real fishing to see if I can get a keeper. And if I don't, I'm gonna go try that last spot. life on the bottom now. See that? That like wasn't there when I first started. Big bounces. Came up with it. Another sea bass. It's still not big enough though. It's pretty cool. Oh! <laughs> I think I hooked something. <laughs> I hurt my hand doing that. Alright, that's one. 
one small guy. One more small guy, we're out of here. fish for blackfish after the wreck i tried a couple spots you know i looked for a, a boulder patch i thought was there but it really wasn't all that great and so i didn't really fish it it came shallower and i just you know didn't find like any fish so that's all right and i probably should have stayed at the wreck considering i didn't have like a lot of sunlight and time to fish anywhere else good but I was just getting shorts and it's kind of like the second time it's happened to me where I just keep getting shorts and shorts and never really get a keeper. So I wanted to you know, try to try something different and that wreck is really small. So I'm pretty sure once that bike gets all hot and whatnot, if you don't get a keeper within like, you know, an hour or two hours, there's probably not a keeper down there. But who knows? Try this again, maybe. You know, if it's nice, would like to try. I got like one more wreck in mind. So these last two wrecks were pretty good. There's definitely fish on them. Uh, but yeah, no keepers. All right, stay tuned. See you next time.